to talk to you about energy resources. Electricity is produced in a power station. Fossil fuels are burned to heat water to produce steam. The steam then turns a turbine which turns inside the generator. I'm a magnet spinning in the generator inside a coil of wire. The magnet produces an alternating current in the coil of wire which produces electricity. <laughs> Fossil fuels are non-renewable energy resources. They are formed when the organic remains of prehistoric uh, organisms die and decay. The main fossil fuels are coal, oil and gas. Oil and natural gas are formed in the same way. They're formed by organisms like plankton and plants which live in fresh water. They die and are buried under rivers and layers of sediment. which eventually turns into rock. After a long period of time, uh, the pressure of water and rock makes the bacteria combine to make natural oil, <laughs> natural gas and oil. The water recedes back, the oil and natural gas start to rise up, but is stopped by the rock. When petroleum companies drill down through the rock, if they're lucky, they might find a spot with oil under it. Look, there's oil under here! And they capture the oil. Yay! Oil! This is how the national grid works. The electricity is first generated at a power station. The voltage is 25 kilovolts. This then goes into a step-up transformer which steps it up to 132 kilovolts or more. This decreases the current, which also decreases. Th this means that it decreases the amount of thermal energy in the wires lost. The electricity goes into pylons, which carry it across large distances. Use overhead cables rather than underground cables, because if something goes wrong, it's easier to find the fault in overground cables. Also, underground cables, if can cause disruptions, if when put under motorways and rivers. Also, if someone's driven down to put in foundations or something, they can hit an underground cable and cause power cuts. It then goes to an electricity substation, or a step-down transformer, which steps down the voltage to about 230 volts, so it's safe for use in houses. It travels through underground cables to our houses! Like Merrins! Wind turbines work by wind flowing over the blades of turbines, creating them to turn. The blades are connected to drive shaft that turns an electric generator to produce electricity. Advantages of wind turbines are that they produce no waste or greenhouse gases. Wind farms can be tourist attractions and they're a good method of supplying energy to remote areas. However, some disadvantages are that there might not be wind and people find them unsightly and that they're very noisy. Also, they kill birds. Solar energy comes from putting solar panels on your roof. It absorbs the sun's UV rays and changes it to electrical energy which you can then use throughout your house. One of the advantages is that it doesn't take up much space. You can just put it on your roof and it doesn't affect you from day to day life. Although a disadvantage is, if you don't live in a sunny climate like here in the UK where we barely see the sun, it's unreliable and you can't get much energy. draw electric dams, use kinetic energy by moving water to produce electricity. This water is put through a turbine, which in turn drives a generator, and that is what creates the energy. An advantage of a hydroelectric dam is that they are much more reliable than wind, solar and wave power. But a disadvantage is that they can affect tidal birds and their inhabitants. Wave power works when waves arrive at a wave power station. They cause water in a chamber to rise and fall. This means that the air is forced in and out of the hole at the top of the chamber. The chamber is fitted with a turbine, which is turned by the air rushing in and out, which turns a generator, and so on. Some advantages of this is that the energy is free, so no fuel is needed and there's no waste products. Also, it's not too expensive to operate and maintain. It can produce a great deal of energy, the waves are always there, and it doesn't take up land space. 
However, some disadvantages are that the waves aren't always there, and sometimes you'll get small ones which won't make much energy, so it needs a suitable site where waves are consistent. Also, fish could swim into it, it's a hazard for boats. Some designs are noisy with the air rushing in and out, and it might not be able to withstand rough weather. Geothermal energy is when they use hot rocks and runs ground to produce a steam. This steam is used to power generators by turning turbines. Which, the advantages of this is that it doesn't use any fuel or produce any, produce any pollution, so it doesn't contribute to the greenhouse effect. And also, once you've built this power station, the energy is basically free. The disadvantages are that there are not many places where you can build the power station, as, as a certain rock is needed that you can drill through and at a, suit, at a suitable depth. Also, the site might run out of steam, and the hazardous gases and minerals might come from underground, which will be difficult to get rid of. Different types of energy resources have different start-up times. Hydroelectric is the quickest because all you have to do is let out the water, but nuclear takes a long time because you have to do a long chain reaction starting with the, um, the core. Nuclear fuel is taken from uranium. Uranium is, is burnt, splitting, splitting the atoms, releasing the energy. The most, it, is most, it is mined out of the ground in Australia, Canada, China, Kazakhstan, Nambia, Russia and Nigeria. I love nuclear energy, you know, I work with it. I mean, it does emit relatively low amounts of carbon dioxide, but the emissions of greenhouse gases, and therefore the contribution of nuclear power plants to global warming, is relatively little. What, what about the radioactive waste, though? I mean, that takes like several thousands of years to actually to be safe. Well, mm. do you, aren't you worried about that? Yeah. Well, the technology is readily available, doesn't have to be developed first, and it's possible to generate a high amount of ele e electrical energy in just one single plant, you have to admit that's good. But aren't you worried about the nu nuclear weapons being produced? I mean, if that has that much energy, it could really harm some, some places. But building new nuclear power stations will ensure that the nation retains control over its own source of energy. We need security of supply in this unstable world. But, but those, those power stations, they could be like, it could be a target for terrorist attack, or for, like, for fuel and waste shipments. I mean, they could be hijacked and like a bomb could be made. Yeah, but generating electricity by nuclear power is a 24-7 operation and it's not dependent on wind, sun or tides or anything like that. It can be fine-tuned to meet peak demand and it won't let us down in the depths of winter. You have to admit it's really good. But it's a, lim it's a limited resource. I mean, it's not even renewable. <sighs> well, I love nuclear power and so does Chappie. Tell the woman. Shut up! This is a waiting room! You can about energy resources for you, Vicky. Did you know that there is evidence that wind energy was used to propel boats along the Nile as early as 5000 BC? Wow! I know. Did you know that the largest wind turbine in the world is in Hawaii? It stands 20 storeys high and has rotated the length of a football field. Blimey, that's big! Did you know that an average wind speed of 14 miles per hour is required to convert wind energy into electricity? Wow! No, it is cool. We've got time for... Thanks for... Watching! Are you waiting? <laughs>